LTE capacity ads are all the rage this year, which is completely unsurprising with soaring data usage across all the networks. In this video, I will talk about how O2 is adding L18 and L21 to their Nokia area streetworks poles and talk about the different site architectures of Nokia sites versus Ericsson sites in terms of deploying radio technologies onto sites and how the two vendors differ in terms of their radio unit portfolio and how they operate. The Streetworks poles that I'm going to talk about typically look something like this. So they are Hutchinson poles, typically Alara's, with a sort of square rectangular base. And they have Nokia cabinets, which are usually Lancasters, which look something like this. But these sites can have other Nokia style cabinets like Hercules or Vulcans as well. Before the capacity upgrade, these sites have UG09, U21 and L08 going through triple band Catherine antennas which are inside the shroud. This is done by using either two FRMA or an FRMF for the L08, two FXDB for the UG09 and then two FRGT for 2100MHz 3G. An important thing to note is that unlike with the other vendor radios, with Nokia each radio can drive multiple sectors and with that said, the six radios at the bottom of this schematic drive all three antennas, i.e. three sectors, and not just the one that's shown in the diagram. It's just drawing three antennas and then the 18 feeders going into those radios would make the diagram horrific and therefore all the radios are shown but only one sector's antenna and I will go on to explain a lot more about how these Nokia radios are doing this in the next slides. The Nokia radios used on sites are 3TX6RX or 6TX6RX. A 3TX6RX radio can run all three sectors of 3G on a site because 3G only has one transmit stream so therefore three sets of one transmit means three total and for diversity reasons you would have typically two receive and therefore two times three is six so one radio will happily in typical circumstances be able to run all the three sectors of 3G Meanwhile, the Ericsson radios that are used by O2 are 1TX, 2RX each. So that means to do a three sector 3G site, you then need three because each radio can do one sector of one transmit and two receive for 3G. For 4G, things become a bit more complicated because the operators want to operate with at least two transmit streams and therefore it's two transmit, two receive per sector, and therefore over three sectors, six transmit and six receive are required. With Nokia equipment, this can be done with two of those radios that are three transmit, six receive, so use the transmit and receive ports to then get six transmit, six receive, which is therefore obviously fine for three sectors of two transmit, two receive, or you use one of the I guess newer radios, which is six transmit, six receive. With the Ericsson equipment, which of course is one transmit, two receive, six radios are therefore required to get the six transmit, six receive, so each sector can be operating in two transmit, two receive. Once again, it's using the transmit and receive ports and not the receive only ports. Now that we've seen what exists before on the Streetworks sites and how the different radio equipment works, let's take a look at the upgrade that O2 is performing onto these Streetworks sites. So starting off with the shroud, the triple band Catherine antennas are taken out and are replaced with quad band Huawei antennas, which have an additional two ports in each antenna. And of course, additional feeders are connected to these. 
then new radio equipment is added to the cabinets. In the case of the L18, an FXED is added, which is a 60X 6RX radio for 1800 MHz. So that one radio does all three sectors of the 4G 1800 MHz. Then for 2100 MHz 4G, a pair of FRGTs, which are 3TX 6RX, are added, or an FRGT plus an FRGU. Now, that's a little bit strange because the FRGU is technically capable of 6TX, 6RX, so it's not clear why you would need an FRGT in that situation. And then there are diplexers to combine the 1800 and 2100 MHz up into those two new feeders per sector that go into the Huawei antennas. On an overall schematic level, this is what the before and after of the site looks like. So actually, much stays the same, just 1800 and 2100MHz radios are added with the subsequent feeders and antenna upgrade that goes with it. Thanks for watching this video about the O2 Nokia capacity upgrades. I hope you've enjoyed it, especially with the comparison of the Nokia and Ericsson radio equipment. and how that affects the deployments and I hope to see you on the next video.